Hello, so it's just a quick video today to go through a little process that I've been using to basically capture gas from the fermentation and use that to purge the kegs that I'm going to then transfer the beer into afterwards. So I've been trying to reduce the chances of any kind of oxygen uptake uh, in my brewing and through the kegging and packaging process, especially by making sure that my kegs are always purged with CO2 prior to kegging. But obviously, most of the time you would be doing that, you're going to use gas straight off of your CO2 tank. And if you're doing that on a lot of kegs, uh, it's going to run your CO2 down um, supply down a bit more fast than it normally would do. So if you're doing pressure fermentation particularly, you can actually capture the gas from that and use it to purge the keg um, rather than having to use the stuff off your CO2 tank. So it's just a, um, yeah, I guess an efficient way to make use of the CO2 that's generated during that process and uh, save yourself a bit from the tank. So um, yeah, I got this method from my friend Chris Millington. Uh, so props to Chris for the original idea for this. Uh, I don't know if he saw it, somebody else doing it somewhere else, but he was the one that told me about it anyway. So uh, thanks to him. And Chris happens to be the guy that I'm actually doing a podcast with currently called The Hop Edition. So if you haven't checked that out already and you want to hear some slightly more long format discussion on uh, homebrewing topics, uh, with quite a bit of banter thrown into the mix as well and just uh, uh, general shenanigans, then uh, go and check us out. I'll put a link down to the website in the description. We also can be found on iTunes and Spotify and a few other um, of the podcasting platforms that you will know about. So um, go and check that out, Hop Edition. Um, there's some good stuff on there, or at least I'd like to think there is. So yeah, let's get on with the uh, harvesting CO2 stuff and um, yeah we'll show you how to do that. Right first things first we've got our empty keg here so just make sure you've cleaned that out and obviously rinsed any cleaning solution or whatever as necessary out of that. I've got a bucket full of star sand here. So I've got about 19 liters of star sand going in. I'm running it in through the product in line. Um, this just stops all the foam getting generated by pouring it straight in through the top. So as much fun as it is to um, grow a massive star sand snake out the top of the keg, it can get a bit messy with all the foam. So if you do it this way, it's a lot cleaner. So we'll just turn the tap on there and make sure that you open the pressure release valve, otherwise it will get airlocked and um, it won't go in. So we just need to let that run until it's filled up. You want it as close to the top as you can get it. Um, so don't worry if it does start to come out of the pressure release valve, um, just obviously turn it off at that point and then you'll know that it's completely full of star sand. Okay, so that's filled up now with the star sand. If there is a little bit of headspace left in the tank or you're not sure it's filled up to the top, just give it a quick purge with CO2. So this is the beer that I've got fermenting away in my pressure fermenter. This is the Firmzilla All Rounder. Uh, as you can see, the fermentation is pretty well established in there. So we've got a good amount of Krausen forming already and we've already built up enough pressure in there to generate about 15 psi on the spunding valve this is the kegland uh spunding valve the newer version that's kind of all in one package and that's the outlet there where we should have a steady stream of co2 being released that we can then harvest um to purge our keg so i think it's probably better to let it to get to this sort of stage before you try and uh, connect everything up so that you can uh, make sure that there is predominantly CO2 coming out of here rather than um, the normal air and stuff that will be pushed out of the top of the FV during the first stages of fermentation. So, um, yeah, it should just be pretty much CO2 coming out of there now because most of that would have been pushed out by the initial fermentation, which you can see, again, with all the yeast and stuff floating around in there is certainly active and uh, progressing quite well already. So these... Uh, Kegland spunding valves have 5 16th connectors on them, which is a minor inconvenience because uh, most of the stuff certainly that I use is 3 8 in terms of gas line and everything. So we're just going to need to make up a um, gas line that 
converts from five sixteenths to three eighths. Um, so this is the five sixteenth width stuff that we've got here. Uh, we just need a John Guest adapter to convert between the two. So this is what I've got to make up the connections from the spunding valve to the keg. I've got a length of, this is the uh, 5 16th line here and a John Guest 5 16th to 3 8th converter on the end of that. Might actually focus if I get it close enough. Yep, there we go. Um, and then just a normal bit of gas line with a gas disconnect on the end of that. So we can connect this into here. And then we just need to hook up this end to our spunding valve and the other end to the gas in on the keg. So the reason we fill the keg up with the star sand is that the CO2 is going to displace that star sand and uh, make sure that what's in the keg is just the CO2 gas that's coming in off of the fermenter. Uh, we need somewhere for the star sand to go to, though, as it's being pushed out. So you will need another little bit of uh, beer line here connected to a disconnect and the end of that is open and it's just going to run back into the star sand bucket over there to collect um, the star sand as it's pushed out of the keg basically. Right I don't have enough room in the uh, fermentation fridge to have the keg and bucket and everything else in there at the same time so what I've got is the line running off of the spunding valve. I've got a hole cut through the door here um, so I can close that up when I need to. And then that line runs down to the gas in on the keg using the tubing that I've set up there. And we can then take our little bit of tubing for the star sand. Make sure you put it into the bucket before you connect this, especially if you've built up a bit of pressure already. Uh, and then if we hook that on, we should, he says, start to get some star sand coming through into this bucket here as it's displaced by the gas coming off of the fermenter. So yeah, it's just building up a bit of pressure, but you can see that is starting to push star sand out of there and uh, you can speed this up a little bit by adjusting the pressure on the spunding valve down so that it's, that it's releasing the pressure more quickly um, if it's built up for a while but I'm in no rush because this is probably the keg that I'll use to uh, keg the beer that's in the fermenter so um, yeah I'll just leave it until it's pushed all the star sand out and then we will have a fully purged keg without wasting any expensive gas out of our co2 cylinder over there so that's about it really a nice nice simple little trick there just to um yeah harvest some co2 and uh save a little bit in your tank for actually carving and pressurizing the beer um, and serving the beer rather than just um purging the tanks like this right as you can see the star sand is all back in that bucket there so this keg is completely purged using the CO2 generated off of our pressurized fermentation here. And basically now we just have the most oversized blow off setup known to man going on in this bucket. So we can disconnect all of that, uh, leave the keg as it is ready for when we want to transfer the beer. Um, make sure you remember to take the, the gas line off of that um, spunding valve because otherwise if you take this disconnect off and leave it there's going to be nowhere for the pressure to go because it's sealed so uh, yeah that's it um, that's only taken a couple of hours to do that as I said you can do it quicker if you turn the pressure down on the spunding valve um, so it releases the gas more quickly but you know you could potentially use this to purge several kegs in one go and uh, save yourself quite a bit of gas so yeah that's it hope that helped um if you've got any comments on that or anyone else is doing this in a different way or if you're harvesting co2 somehow through 
non-pressurized fermentations. Uh, let me know about that and uh, share some of your ideas on this as well. Cheers. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing.